Hello and welcome to Tile Unplugged. This podcast brings you insightful discussions with incredible members of the university from both student facing and staff facing side of support at Staffordshire University. I'm Rowan Walker and I'm thrilled to embark on this new exciting journey through audio and visual podcasting. Today, I have the privilege of sitting down with a very special guest, Robin Ray, who is another member of Tile Hub. Um, so before we get into the main bulk of discussion today, Robin, would you like to introduce yourself and give me a little bit of background about yourself, but also what you do in Tile Hub? I certainly can. Um, so yes, my name's Robin Ray. Uh, so uh, yeah, I started here at Staffs in April as the digital curriculum designer. Uh, but before that, I've got I've got a background in uh, teaching maths actually. So I've taught maths both in secondary school and further education, and uh, I've also spent quite a lot of my career in educational publishing. So working as a senior editor and a, a product developer on uh, various educational tools. Uh, so yeah, I feel like that kind of works quite well with my role now. So what I do as a digital curriculum designer is uh, I, I work mainly supporting teaching staff, um, so supporting how they can use uh, tech and other kind of digital pedagogies in, in their teaching. How are you finding that so far? That's great. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Better than Effie? Uh, oh, well, I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't want to be too negative. But, uh, no, it's, it's you know it's the, a lot of the a lot of the challenges are very similar actually. So although it's kind of big scale, and so when I when I first started in eight years, my first time working mm-hmm. in a university, um, it was a bit overwhelming just the, the sheer scale. But um, I mean, teaching is teaching at the end of the day, and a lot of the the challenges that that I had as a teacher in FE, um, especially teaching during during COVID. Um, yeah, th- that that translates here as well. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Well, just a bit of gra- background on myself as well. Uh, I started here in August last year, which is terrifying. That's nearly a year. Actually, it would be a year when this podcast comes out. Uh, as an intern, which I've moved now into a student-facing role, which involves doing content creation like this for students to come in and watch and listen to so that's also video tutorials uh, as well as hosting events and workshops for students to pop into so i know in september we've got stuff on ai but there's also the lovely blackboard area for students to come in and learn how to use that too Mm -hmm. Uh, resource pages so tile hub's got its own sharepoint with all of the student guides and things like that um and I think one of the biggest ones just to mention on the top of my head is also trying to work with students to improve their digital skills as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, things like we have the GIST survey so people can go on, have a look at where they're standing with their digital capabilities at the moment. Um, so it's really about pushing that as well. Uh, and overall, I think I think this comes down to both of us, even though we're slightly different. Mm-hmm. You're just trying to help both staff and students both thrive academically as well as professionally and personally as well. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And also, you know, just as the students are, have got the JISC digital capabilities, there's there's also one for staff. So, you know, it's kind of everyone's on the journey together <laughs> <laughs> to improving their digital capabilities. <laughs> and I think that's, that's so important today. I think it's very often overlooked. Um, and when you actually come to the working place, it's like, you know, can you go on and use these digital tools to the best of your ability Mm -hmm. and i think now it's quite a good place to be in uh, at staffs because previously i don't think there was anything quite like it and now you know there is such that big push there for students and staff both to use it um to improve yeah absolutely and i think we need to remember that um you know we shouldn't be expecting either staff or students to automatically be experts and everything you know it's and hopefully we can try and break down some of those barriers and some of the shame around kind of saying oh actually i don't know how to use (laughs) this and because yeah chances are you you're not on your own and there's a community of people who who you know are our experts in some things but also who are just on the learning journey themselves and can all kind of help each other yeah. really because i think especially with that survey as well when i was doing my own um i was like oh my god i've scored so low in these areas but then when you actually go through the resources it kind of like really does make sense and like hammer home like 
you might have been on the internet or used a computer all your life, um, but it doesn't mean that necessarily you are 100% in it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. So I think it's very important to discuss what Tile Hub is. I don't think I understood it when I started and it wasn't around when I was a student. Um, so what does Tile stand for? Okay, so <laughs> TILE stands for Teaching Innovation and Learning Enhancement. Uh, so yeah, interestingly, I think maybe people think that the T stands for tech because that is what we do, but... Well, we are digital, so it would make sense for it to be technology. Um, why, why isn't it technology? Well... We have an approach, my understanding is that we have, <laughs> no, we have an approach um, of pedagogy first. Yeah, so instead of just saying, right, okay, here's a load of tech, let's, let's invest in this tech and force people to use tech in their, in their teaching and learning. Um, it's a lot more about kind of listening uh, to, to what is actually needed to make improvements, so what students want to see, what, what staff want to do with their teaching, um, and we can support support staff, teaching staff to to kind of implement um, things, tools, and you know digital solutions in their teaching uh, that's ultimately going to benefit the students and their learning. So um, that's that's my interpretation of it i don't know if you've got a different one from your side no i'm i'm exactly the same i think i think technology you know because there are those different facets because there is another team very similar to us but then at the same time um as i've come to learn more i like vr i like technology i studied for technology mm -hmm. um and i've realized very quickly that you know just because vr is there and existing mm -hmm. how will that then implement into teaching practices as well so Yes, the teaching is becoming more and more relevant every day uh, mm -hmm. rather than tech. But tech's important, not to try and dismiss it. Not at all. No, not at all. <laughs> so what are some of the aims, the overall aims of both the team and Tile Hub in general and digital pedagogies? I struggle saying that word. Digital <laughs> pedagogies. Um, yeah, so I suppose the overall aim is... Um, is kind of threefold we've got the training side so i know you know bo both of us offer training to staff but there's yeah. also training of students um and uh, there's the kind of day-to-day -day support so we do offer kind of drop-in sessions and you know people can kind of come and ask us questions and um, sort of overarching that is kind of you know the, the sort of the longer term development of of you know individual skills but also um you know kind of looking at the university on a, on a wider level and kind of developing you know what systems have we got in place yeah. you know do we want a lecture capture policy you know do we want to invest in new software what vle are we using and, and so on and so forth so that's again that's my understanding <laughs> of it of what we're trying to do and then that kind of that's, that feels like the bigger picture and then it breaks down into kind of individual activities that, that we take part. And it's, I think it's so broad as well because I know there's a lot of different cogs moving and sometimes it might feel disjointed and then all of a sudden they all click into place sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and I think it, it, it's still expanding. I don't think our aims are 100% set in stone mm -hmm. as of right now and especially like, you know, a new rock will form somewhere else and then we move to that branch for a time being just to come back later on um, especially with the student face inside of things because I don't before, think before st staff has ever had that mm -hmm. so now having that discussion and that closer connection with students it opens our aims up even more because all of a sudden we've realized oh no there's not there's all of these different things that we need to start considering now as well yeah. um, and trying to not push that way but like especially like evolve in that way yeah and kind of be responsive to changes so yeah, yeah i know one of the things that we're all kind of concerned with at the moment is you know how to adapt to generative ai and different ai writing tools and things like that and you know if we were the same team starting work 12 months ago 
maybe that wouldn't that would wouldn't have been quite such a kind of urgent thing to uh, to consider but i think in having having a broad definition of what we're for helps us respond to uh, to things that come up because especially because we work in tech and things change they change really drastically <laughs> yeah i mean blackboard itself now has an entire application just to help uh different users with different sort of accessibility needs then use different pieces of equipment so it's making sure that yeah. you know both students are aware of how to access that but then also making sure staff are aware how to make that accessible as well yeah absolutely i mean accessibility is like a, a bit of a personal passion of mine because yeah like I'm, i've got a hearing impairment so i'm really kind of like <laughs> wary of sort of what what content is accessible or not to me um and yeah and i think it's it's important that the the tech that we're introducing is kind of you know making things more accessible and more usable rather than just adding extra complications yeah because sometimes you know less does equal more and more just is too much absolutely yeah yeah so what have you been working on since starting Oh, <laughs> oh! It feels like <laughs> so much. A long time ago, right? I'm going to consult my notes. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think kind of broadly, apart from the sort of the day to day responding to immediate things as they yeah. come up, um, yeah, the kind of the the, the broader projects. Um, so well, we've all been kind of developing the uh, Blackboard masterclasses. So we started running those sessions. Um, over the summer, my particular sort of area of expertise, I mm -hmm. guess, is in assessments. Um, uh, you know, especially because, you know, being an ex-teacher and a lot of the, uh, the things I worked on um, when I worked in publishing as well was all kind of, you know, concerning uh, assessments and that sort of thing. That sort of thing. So yeah, I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a nerd about stuff like that. So I've been running that, um, and yeah, we've also been working on. So uh, we've got this year a new mandate for um, for the type of content that goes onto the Blackboard VLE, and the idea behind it is to make it better for students, so that there's some kind of consistent template um, for staff put in uh, teaching staff put in their course materials on on the blackboard vle uh, we want to make sure there's uh, you know kind of a minimum um specified content on there that's going to be helpful for students um and if it's consistent as well then you know when students are kind of accessing their different modules they they signposted to things easier they know exactly where to look for you know their endpoint assessment or you know their, their lecture recordings and so on um so yeah so i've been helping with the uh, building those templates um and trying to get get that communication out to people as well uh i've done a bit of kind of ad, ad hoc mm. uh digital curriculum design so just as and when people have got a course that they need help building so i've kind of done uh, done some consultation on <laughs> things like uh, the transition micro credentials um and uh, things for academic mentoring that sort of thing um so i've got a few more of those little projects on the go um what else have people done so I've, I've been um looking at trialing different software um so longer term uh, i'm i'm going to be looking at uh software for e-portfolios because i know there are a lot of courses at staffs yeah um where their endpoint assessment is portfolio based so i, I find i feel that that's like a real gap in the technology that we've got so i'm going to be looking into you know what we actually need and what could potentially fill that gap um but yeah i know there's on a smaller scale there, there are different mm -hmm. departments that are looking at just you know smaller smaller bits of software um so i've been helping them uh, look at the alternatives and things that they either want to kind of use for free or maybe buy or try out and uh 
Yeah. Oh, and uh, the blog as well. So we've launched a tile <laughs> blog. Uh, so uh, in my my previous job, I, I used to I used to manage a tech blog. Um, so I'm I'm quite at home with WordPress writing about things. Uh, so yeah, hopefully that sits nicely alongside what you're you're trying to do here. And uh, mm. it, the, yeah, the idea behind it is to um, basically share good practice. Uh, so I'm going around and, and trying to look for ways in which people are using uh, tech to enhance their teaching and either uh, writing about it myself or getting them to write something about it and giving them a platform really just to, to raise, aware, uh, raise awareness um, and yeah, try and build it up as a, a bit of a community of practice really. So it's yeah. not just you know we are the experts you should do what we do what we say you know just people already out there using uh using really in- innovative things uh and yeah i want to share that and celebrate it i think that's really important especially for students who might be thinking oh this doesn't sound anything to do it, it does directly relate to them Absolutely. because at the end of the day you know we're behind the scenes being that little shadow creatures screaming in their ears you know try and do this little thing um and it does you know the little things all eventually add up into hopefully a successful thing yeah absolutely i mean you know the 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 teaching staff want to do their best for yeah. the students so and work with the feedback from students to actually improve their courses and uh, and yeah if if one of the ways they can improve their courses is to use use tech in a, yeah, in a yeah, certain yeah. way, then yeah, we want to help them do that. Yeah, and I think it's really important now, especially with the student side of things, is that if there is something that, you know, students th- have been thinking about or, you know, they've been on something, something doesn't quite click or something doesn't quite work, mm-hmm. you know, that we can then take, you know, if they come to us and recommend something that then can be shared on higher up so Absolutely. those changes can then start to be implemented. Because I think that's one of the things with another one of our team members, Simran's working on lecture capture at the moment. You know, students have asked, you know, through either the student union or have come straight through the lecturers. Yeah. I can't attend this lecture due to personal reasons or, you know, I live on the other side of the world and can't attend. Yeah. Yeah. So it's even like little things like that, you know, small comments like that go a long way in the term of things for investing time into looking into something. Absolutely. Yeah, I would definitely recommend, you know, if there's something, you know, if you're having having trouble, you can see that there's a solution, uh, you know, definitely raise it because people do want to, to, to listen and to make those improvements. And yeah, I mean, for example, just coming back to AI as well, you know, there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of drive towards, um, you know, students wanting to know how to kind of use AI ethically and use it to help them, but maybe are afraid that, you know, oh, well, is it going to be seen as cheating and things like that? So that's another thing that we can kind of help with and help support staff in knowing, okay, what kind of yeah. what kind of tools are your students wanting to use and wanting to learn more about? And then how does this fit with, uh, you know, the kind of um, the, the integrity of, of the courses as well? So. Yeah, and especially with AI, because I don't think anyone has an answer. I know we mm-hmm. have answers, but not necessarily the correct ones for day to day. You know, it changes all the time. And, yeah. you know, especially with staff, they're worried about it. Students are worried about it. Yeah. We're worried about it, but then, you know, look forward to using it as well. Um, so I think it's quite good being able to have a discussion with both staff and students about that. Um, because I know we have stuff going on for staff at the moment, you know, especially our boss's boss, John Hendy, is doing a lot with staff regarding AI. Mm-hmm. And I think the plan is at some point is to have a massive road tour as he's called it about ai um, for students as well because it is such a massive it's like the calculator i can only imagine what they've been going through back when the calculator was made you know yeah you know even if that's roman times when they're using the little i forgot it's called the bead thing the abacus the abacus the abacus there you go go. uh i can imagine them having breakdowns how it's not mental maths anymore um I mean, if we're talking maths, did you know the Romans didn't have a zero? They didn't have a zero? No. 
when zero came along it was absolute game changer so you know <laughs> imagine that it's like isaac <laughs> newton with gravity you know exactly and now we've got chat gpt so <laughs> yeah, that's where we're at. and it's only going to get better from here one day we'll have a completely human brain scan into an ai that will be scary wow well, yeah we're getting there already kind of so Coming back on yeah. to the tracks, uh, I think it's important just to discuss why is everything we do important to students? What are we, what are we looking to achieve? And I think for me, it is talking about digital skills and focusing on these new areas that are coming up. Because at the end of the day, I noticed this when I graduated. I can spend three, five, ten years studying something, but if I'm not looking at outside of that bracket when you step into a new place you realize oh there's all these skills that yeah. i need yeah. and hopefully the aim with our team is those skills are being provided so people can work through them expand i don't know a word outside of improve maybe enhance you know their knowledge of how to use these things yeah. Um, I don't know if you've got any other thoughts on that. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it's 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 not something in isolation. The I think even even if you sort of say, oh well, you know, um, I'll I'll never have to use a VLE again when I graduate. So why do I need to learn how to use Blackboard? But it's it's bigger than that, and something I um, you know I've I've found it especially like in. In previous roles, um, you know, where I've been kind of, yeah, giving giving tech support to, to other people and, and, you know, kind of like absolute beginners. And, and it's always about building people's confidence enough to kind of try something out. You know, you can never be the absolute expert on all tech because tomorrow there's some new tech <laughs> that you've never used before um so it's not about that it's it's yeah we can we can give you the skills on certain software but built into that is kind of building up that confidence that's kind of overarching to say oh okay well this is a new piece of software that I'm using in the workplace that I haven't used before. But I remember when I was at university that I could just kind of look in these menus for this, or I could maybe, uh, you know, contact the, uh, you know, the 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 software support team or something for this, or I could, you know, have that kind of confidence to play around, um, and it becomes more intuitive. Uh, so yeah, I absolutely think that we're not just here to. Um, develop people's skills just for university yeah. it is it is absolutely holistic you know and can take those skills you know into the workplace and of course a, a lot of students here are already in the workplace yeah. as well yeah. at the same time and so they'll be able to see how it um how it all interacts and it's yeah it's so like such valuable skills as well and yeah and you, even when when we're supporting staff, we are supporting staff for teaching and learning. You know, that is what the T and the L stand for yeah. in Tile. And teaching and learning is for for the students. So it's it's that part of that that side of higher education. Yeah. And I think especially, you know, that I think you think of student, you think of a I I mean, you think of a young person, but that's you know, anyone, you know, is is learning at the end of the day. Both mm -hmm. staff and students are both learning spending time to develop on what is important and i think that's really useful especially having those resources workshops there for them to come and interact with absolutely yeah um so yeah that was absolutely great i think the most important thing to talk about then is where can we find more where can we find your blog where can we find our resources what exists where so I'll start. You're on the Tile Hub YouTube channel, hopefully, yes. or Spotify, if that comes around in the future. Um, so you'll be able to type in on YouTube, Tile Hub Staffs, mm -hmm. or Staffs Tile Hub, and it will pop up with a nice big Staffordshire logo. Uh, you'll also be able to find our SharePoint, which will be in the description thing below. So you can access there, so you can see all of the resources on how to use different pieces of equipment but more importantly 
also see any upcoming student events as well so that's like student digital activation day that can be individual workshops but it's also any events that come up in the future as well for students mm -hmm. and potentially you know there might be a wider one so if you're in a teaching background and we're hosting an event you can attend those but then if there's any other little events especially for things like nursing but also you know your art and design courses policing uh, normally there is either some involvement on our end or we should like share those events over on our pages as well uh, you'll also be able to find us on twitter at staffs tile hub very similar i hope that's the hashtag or the at it will be down below or x whatever it's called in the future because i have a feeling they're going to go back to twitter but we'll see uh, uh and you'll be able to find even more posts on there about all of the amazing things we do um but where can we find your blog so people can read about it as well? The reason I was laughing, <laughs> Rowan, is because, of course, this is the one thing that I didn't write down. Oh, and no. I can't remember the URL for the blog. <laughs> so can we Well, that's, that's fine. <laughs> what we'll do is, is we'll okay. have a link to the blog in the description Great. below. Um, but yet again, I think it's, it's for mm. anyone. You know, you can come and read whatever's on there. Mm -hmm. And find out more about our team. I think awesome. our boss has a big picture of an eagle on his arm at the moment on there, right? Definitely worth going and checking out that intro post just to see a picture of our boss yeah. holding an owl. Oh, yeah. Is yeah. an owl? I thought it was an eagle. It's an eagle owl. Eagle owl? Yeah. You, you have to go. You have to go. <laughs> uh, but you'll, you'll be able to see all of our lovely faces on there. So if you see us about, feel free to ambush us and drop us a question. Or say hi. Or, you know, you can buy me a burrito. That's equally as good as well. I also accept payment in burritos. Yeah, they're good. Yes. That That's my number one tip for the end of this podcast is if you're over by Beacon Building, the burrito shop is really good. I think it's officially called the Pavilion. It is, but it's burrito shop. Too. Burrito shop. Or, or nacho shop, depending on what I feel that day. Or, or a rice box. Or, I'm partial or, to a rice yeah, box. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yes, it's great having you on. Thank you very much thank you. for this session. Uh, thank you for everyone for listening. Uh, the next episode of Tile Unplugged is going to all be about AI. So feel free to tune into that. AI is such a big thing and it's getting bigger every day. So if we start posting resources about, you can tune into those, have a listen. Uh, and more importantly, let us know your thoughts. So please subscribe below so you're able to see more of this amazing content.